Okay, so today I wanted to look at how to add fonts to Generate Press. Um, so Generate Press uh, gives you access to lots of Google fonts and certainly the local fonts that are on your machine, but sometimes you might want to add some other fonts from Google Fonts or Adobe Fonts, uh, aka Typekit, uh, fonts.com, or wherever. So I'm going to show you not every single way, but mainly how to add additional fonts for the, uh, from Google Fonts that may not appear in the default list with Generate Press, and how to add fonts from uh, Adobe Fonts. Um, but adding them in other ways is really uh, maybe not just as easy. But those are, those are the main two that I find most people using. And uh, if we want to see a situation where we add some other, uh, maybe some uh, font files that we uh, load uh, onto the site ourselves, where we host the font files, and you want to link to those, um, that's fairly easy as well. Just a little more in depth, so I'm not going to go into that just yet. But first, let's start with, uh, here's, uh, again, my blog site that I'm redoing because it is not currently on WordPress, and I really don't use it much anymore, but... It's a great uh, opportunity to share with others uh, how I use my child theme uh, for uh, Word, uh, for Generate Press, sorry, which is available on GitHub, and there's a link in the description. Um, but let's look at the customizer. So that's where uh, we're going to go to appearance and customize. And just to uh, show what's going on here, I have Generate Press installed, but I have my child theme uh, installed with it. Uh, that lets me, I have it set up the way I want, and this is what these videos are really all about, uh, making the customizations that are available in Generate Press to really make it our own. So, on with the fonts. We go to Customize. So, we're going to look at what is sort of out of the box, and, and actually, I probably ought to go in here. So, this is, I'm skipping around a little, I'm sorry, but, so this is my child theme in VS Code, and first I'm going to go to functions.php. I'm going to scroll down to where all these things are included. So I have this folder of ink files that really has all of the stuff that the child theme uses. So I want to look for fonts, and it is included. So now I can go to the fonts.php file, and here's where I have my... I guess helpers, whatever, there's filters and hooks and things like that. So the first one is I want to show all the Google fonts. So there, there's the docs, the link to the Generate Press docs that shows how this works. But uh, just to show you, I'm going to comment it out, save it. And I'm working locally, by the way, using uh, Laragon. Laragon, I'll look up how to say that at some point. So I'm going to refresh my customizer. wait for it to load and go to typography and let's look at the body font choices so we have system stack is what it defaults to so I'm on Windows so that is Sego UI I believe but I can look and see here's the Google fonts so I get a lot and to be honest I don't even know well, let's say let's say work oh no that's there okay uh, Baskerville no that's there too Franklin that's there too um, so I can't think of a font that is in the list, uh, that, I'm sorry, that is on Google Fonts that would not be on the list. Anyway, it's a, uh, I think it shows the most, you know, I don't know what it shows, I'll be honest, but I know that this function was in here because, uh, by default, for performance reasons, it doesn't load every single one, but once you enable this and tell it, using this generate number of fonts hook, and tell it to return all I'm um, going to save and refresh again, even though I haven't shown you any that uh, aren't there. Um, it loads all the fonts that are built in to generate press uh, from Google. But there are some, unless they've updated it, that aren't there. And I'm looking for some in particular. Caslon. Okay, so I want to use... Uh, Libre Caslon, and it's from the same uh, foundry that gave us Baskerville and gave us uh, Libre Franklin. Yeah, 
which I love old, um, well, Baskerville's British, but, you know, with American roots, these, these fonts were used in American printing, what, early 1900s, um, maybe late 1800s. But they're just kind of those timeless fonts. So let's look at Google Fonts, and I'll show you the one that I'm talking about. Yes, yeah, so we have Libre Caslon Text, which is for text setting, and the display, which is finer and used for larger sizes. But I want this one. I want to use Libre Caslon Text, but it's not showing up in my customizer list. So I'm going to make it show up in the customizer list. So let's select this, and let's look at what weights we have available. We have 400, 400 italic, and 700. And let's see if we select this style. What is it called? Just Libre Caslon Text. Okay. So here's what we want to do. I'm going to go back to my child theme. And we're actually going to go down to this option right here. Add other Google fonts to the font list. And again, here is the, uh, the documentation link that shows where I got this. So I'm going to uncomment the actual hook itself, generate typography, customize list. And we've called this function, which, you know, you can give this function any name you want, but it's going to uh, let us add our own fonts. Barlow was one of those fonts that, uh, oh, well, that was one that, <laughs> uh, what, no, sorry. Barlow is one that uh, does not show up in the list regardless, or at least didn't before. So we're going to replace that with Caslon. So Libre Caslon Text. As far as I know, this name is sort of the placeholder name. The display name is this, like what you see when you're selecting the font in Generate Press. And it is a serif font. So this category, we do get a fallback choice, whereas with this one, we do not. But I'll get to that in a minute. So our weights that we want available are regular 400, 400 italic, and bold 700. So let's do 400, 400i. And I'm just going to delete. Oh, that is not what I meant to do. That was disorienting. Okay, I need a comma there. This is an array. So we get a comma separated list of items, and we don't, there is no italic. In the bold weight so that's what we want so I'm gonna save this and we're gonna go back to I've lost my here we go <laughs> lost my sight I'm gonna refresh again and yes we don't want to keep those changes because I want Caslon which has its has its roots in England very popular font Typography, body. Okay, now there is Libre Caslon text. And you'll see that it loads the font and shows me a preview of it. And I can make adjustments. Um, I am a little confused right now as to why the weights aren't showing for me to select. That is curious. I may have done something I shouldn't have. I'm not entirely certain. It all looks to be there. Okay, so I'll come back to that uh, later if necessary. But anyway, we can publish this. Yeah, something fishy is going on because that should be bold. So maybe we'll get to troubleshoot together <laughs> here for a minute. So if I look at the source, let's see what's going on. Okay, so it loads Libre Caslon text, but it's not loading the weights. So I'm not getting an italic. Yeah, so I'm just getting, it's obliquing or just slanting the Roman font. That's not what we want at all because Caslon has a beautiful italic. So we want that. So let's see what we can figure out. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is we're going to open this link to the documentation. And let's see here. So we have, okay, so maybe 
I need to do an underscore instead of a dash. Now, I don't know why that would be necessary, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm willing to try whatever. Okay, so here's the thing, though. That instance has been saved in there, so I, I don't want to bork it. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to... <coughs> excuse me. Change it back to the system stack and publish it. And then go back and try this. Now, if this works, that's really weird. Um, although I do know that PHP variables do not like dashes, if I remember correctly. So let's see. I've saved. Let's go back here and refresh. <clears throat> And cross our fingers and say a little prayer and hope that that worked. So back to typography and body. And we're going to search for Caslon. Wow. Okay. So that did it. So now we get our bold text. <laughs> and now we get, let's see if I click read more, we should get our true italics. Yeah, look at that. Okay, cool. So easy fix. Wasn't aware. I need to make a note of that. You know what? Let's do that right now. Uh, I'm going to switch folders real quick and go to my child theme and we'll make that change and go ahead and push it up to GitHub. Yeah, so here. So let's see. Not quite sure how to do this. Oh, what in the world? Let's see, must use underscore. And not dash. Yeah, that'll work for now. Okay. So we'll save that. Um, Google font. I don't know if you call that a variable name. I'll just say font name. Um, with under score note comment and we'll save that and push it up okay and that's done so we'll switch back to the blog here it's fun to learn together right <laughs> And make mistakes together and find solutions. Okay, so that was adding Caslon. So I'm going to publish that. And let's see our fix. Yeah, look at those italics. And this is bolding correctly now. So if we look at... Yeah, so there we get it now. There's the reference to uh, Google Fonts. Libre Caslon text. And we get 400, 400 italic and 700. Nice. Okay, and while I will probably end up using um, Franklin Gothic, or Libre Franklin, which is here, I can't spell, yeah, this is a great open source version of Franklin Gothic, wonderful font or everything from this foundry impolari type is great. They have a Bodoni too that I really can't wait to be released. I hope it gets added to Google Font soon. Um, so let's look at how you use a type kit or well, Adobe fonts, whatever you want to call it. So let's say I want I want a historical kind of a wood type poster sans serif to go with this so I'm gonna look at 
think it's Balboa. Yeah. It's another great font. Jim Parkinson's a uh, legend in the world of editorial typography. Um, I think this was designed for Entertainment Weekly. Eh? Do I have that magazine right? Anyway, yeah, I want to use... I don't know which one. Maybe this one. I kind of like the condensed, although that big fat one's really nice too. Okay, we'll go with the medium for now. So we're going to create a new kit. Blog 2020 and create. Okay, I'm going to say, no, yeah, edit project. That's what I want. So to do this with Typekit, there's a couple of other things we have to do. Or I say a couple, really just one. I'm going to, let's go ahead and add. I don't want to go crazy with it because you don't want to add a lot of weight to your page. And fonts can be big. And one of the ways you can uh, kind of slim down on your fonts is Typekit lets you uh, customize like for example just give me the English characters and disable open type um, I like that too uh, how the font loading works um okay we're just gonna well let's add a couple of extra let's let's do the black weight too that's a big fat one yeah okay so we have the medium and the black so I'm gonna save these and we want to reference uh, these but we also need to where do I get? I can't remember where I get. Um, I need a link from. Maybe do I need to click? Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. So I need to cue this using this function, WP on Q style. So you can read these. You know, the, the WordPress docs are great. Um, so we have a handle, which is the name of the sheet should be the it points to the file um no i'm sorry the handle is the name <laughs> that you give it in wordpress and it can be used to identify it and do things to it um source is what is the path to the style sheet dependencies you can declare via handle um, what this style sheet may depend on uh, you can get a version and declare the media like screen print or all so yeah, so what I'm going to do is go back to functions.php and we're going to go up here to where I've queued up uh, some styles. So I'm going to duplicate this first one and call this Adobe Fonts. And because we're not, it's not going to live in my uh, style sheet directory for my theme, I'm going to get rid of that function and we're just going to have this path. So I need just this bit right here, and it may not. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to copy that and replace this. Okay, so it's going to build in, saying there are no dependencies. Uh, it's going to inherit the version here that I've declared, which is okay. And yeah, I want to use it for all um, different media. So right now, if I save this, and I go back and refresh, and now we view source, we should see our Adobe fonts. And there's Typekit right there. Okay, and there's our Balboa fonts ready to be used. So now we just need to add them to the customizer. So let's go take another look at this. So it calls it Balboa, and it is a sans serif. So I'm going to copy that and go back to fonts.php. Okay, and now here's this part. Add custom fonts, local, typekit, fonts.com, etc. And there is documentation on how to do this within Generate Press. So it walks you through how to download. Oh, okay, so it... Okay, well, it looks like they're recommending a plugin, but 
you don't have to do that necessarily yeah okay well that's fine so maybe in another video I'll go through how to load a local font or if we have time this doesn't run long I may do it now I don't know okay so let's get back to adding our Adobe font so we have this part so I'm gonna uncomment um, generate typography default fonts and that is gonna let us pull in Balboa again the problem with this is as far as I know is that we can't define a fallback or cascade like serif or sans serif or anything like that um you know not a huge deal breaker or at least I say that let's copy that let's take one more look at that has Tom changed anything that's the mom types Here we go. No. Yeah. Okay, so it's still the same. And that's, you know, that's okay. Um, maybe you can fix that later. So now we have Balboa. Okay. If I come back to the customizer and we refresh again. And again, I'm using this. So Adobe is going to be looking for that font name. Uh, so that's that's what I'm going to use. So now let's go to typography and our headings. Um, so is this a heading one? Let's go to the actual article. Yeah, so let's check this out. I think that's a single content title. Oh, not that. Do I have to do font family here? There it is, Balboa. Okay, check this out. Nice. Oh, I didn't pull in. Oh, I didn't define a weight. Okay. Or maybe I can't do that. I, okay, yeah, that's right. Okay, so something we'll have to do because it it's not a Google font. It's not going to pick up on the weight, so that's going to be kind of up to us to keep up with. So look in your Adobe fonts, and we're using 500 and 800. Okay, so we're going to need to define, let's look at what 500 looks like. I guess that is 500. No, I bet this, yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's actually what 500 looks like, and then 800. Okay, that's the big, fat, bold one. Okay, so let's go see what heading 2 looks like. Will it? No, yeah, it's going to inherit the Caslon. I am confused. Oh, yeah, I figured that. That's a heading three. That's. Mm, okay. Well, I'm going to fix that later. But, yeah, there you go. Oh, look how nice that looks in the sidebar. Yeah, so that's how you add a font with uh, Google Fonts and with Adobe Fonts. Um, You know what? Let's go ahead and I'm going to look up. So I have a fonts.com account. And, oh, I need to sign in. You know what? This one's going to take too long, I think, because you have to go through. They give it some crazy names. Let's just go to Font Squirrel. Do I have that right? Yeah, okay. So let's... What do we want to do? Oh, you know what? There is... Wait. Never mind. Sorry. I don't have to do this. I have some stuff. Locally that we can try out. Yeah, so let's look in my fonts folder. And this is something I, budge, I don't have. 
<laughs> okay. Bear with me. Let's go to the generator. And let's upload a font. So what I'm going to do is find this is an open source font that I happen to like a lot. We're going to do just the bold version. It's like a Clarendon font. And I'm not going to go through here and optimize it and everything. That's a whole separate... Um, issue you can go through here and really customize this to the teeth and get it exactly the way you want it so that it's really slim so you can see it's 215k which is fairly big that's a big font um you know what maybe I'll uh aren't there languages I can pick from I hope you guys are interested in this we want to keep the kerning we'll let uh yeah we'll let them do the the true type hinting or well you know what we'll keep the existing so that's for lower res screens uh, custom subsetting that's it so we want and it's going to show me character encoding Mac Roman that's fine um there it is okay so it shows me a character preview here are all the characters that are going to be included in this subset uh, and I wish it would give me it doesn't a uh, preview of the file size that I'm saving language let's just check English okay it actually grew a little bit well that's okay okay so we'll download our kit and we're gonna get into a little bit more CSS here um, just because we have to do a little bit more on our own okay so let's open that up and see what it gives us so we get two font formats. We get WAF and WAF2. Uh, we get some specimen stuff, which we don't need. And we get a style sheet. We are going to need this. Uh, this is what's going to pull our information in about these fonts. So we have to do a little customization. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go to C. You know what? No, let's just create... A new folder call it fonts and within here we'll create a folder and call it I forgot the name of it already bestly is that right yes it is so let's we're gonna copy all these I think I can do this I cannot do this okay so we're going to reveal and file explorer fonts, bestly, and paste. Now, now we can open up these. I can't remember what this gives us. Okay, so it's calling the path. That's cool. Okay. So, and we get bestly bold. So that's going to be the reference name for it. But we're going to need to fix this path because that is not going to find it because WordPress is going to be looking... And here's what we can do, at least with VS Code. It's going to help us. So we're going to go WP Content Themes, Generate Press Child, Fonts, Bestly, and we want Loft 2. And we're going to do the same. I'm just going to copy and paste because it is the same. And we're going to get just Loft. Okay, I'm going to get rid of these spaces because I don't like them. I'm going to save that. And I think what we can do here... Gosh, I hope I'm telling you right. <laughs> Sometimes this is just through trial and error. Um, so now what we need to do is we're going to have another fonts reference. We're going to look at the style sheet and we're going to call bestly bold okay but it's not going to work yet because we need to queue up the style sheet 
So again, we're going to duplicate one of these. And I'm just going to call this Bessley font. We do want the reference to our child theme, which is what this function gives us. It gives us a piece of a URL. There you go. Style sheet directory URI. And then we're going to look for fonts. Bestly and style sheet. Okay, hopefully that will do the trick. So let's go back over here and refresh. I don't know if it'll load it without me calling it or not. Let's take a look at the source. Yeah, there it is. And there's our style sheet. Now hopefully this will work because it does get kind of wonky when you're referencing a path from something in a path something like that it's okay so let's uh let's publish and refresh again so now maybe i want our site identity and i'm not saying i'm going to leave it like this this might be kind of ooh, typography kind of uh not uh attractive looking there's bestly bold and it worked <laughs> that's the font so hooray uh and again we have to kind of keep up with the weights and uh yeah if you want to know more about how to include your own fonts within style sheets um, there is a, a bit of a trick to this. Like this has font weight normal and font style normal. It's actually bold, but we don't have a normal version of it, so uh, it wouldn't. It, it's you know it doesn't matter. Uh, but if we had Bestly normal, a regular, we would just call this Bestly throughout, but we would change the weight and style reference for each one accordingly. So this is the bold font. So to me, it should be called bold. Anyway, we'll publish that, and let's take a look. Yeah, so there we have it. So that is uh, adding fonts to our Generate Press Child theme. Uh, once again, um, Tom Usborn with Generate Press, Usborn, <laughs> has uh, given us some neat ways that aren't really difficult, and especially... Uh, if you download the child theme, I've tried to make this as, as plain as possible on how you can uh, set this up. Uh, you can add in whatever you want. Anything's missing, so sky's the limit. Find the fonts you want to use and, uh, and check them out. And have fun designing and developing.